Well, we seem to be getting into deep water. I don't know why. Don't you? No. Ooh. Leave him! What about the woman? What woman? The RSPCA inspector. She saw us. Some little shit is dead and he shouldn't be right. What matters now is that our son walks away from this without ruining his life. A crime that happened a long time ago. A crime that has happened exactly the same way now as it did then. I've always admired the way animals fight to protect their young. I suppose there is no doubt that it was arson. Well, the chief fire officer thinks so, yes. But we need forensics, Jack. They should be able to get into the reception now. That's where the fire started. Right. Conscious for at least ten minutes, so we ought to get started, shouldn't we? No jokes. <coughs> <coughs> Laughing's what hurts. Hey, come on. Come on now, you, you're doing so well. Unless they're charged, we're going to have to release them. Mrs. Moorhead's lucky to be alive. Don't know how she feels now about being the only witness we have. And Joshua. I'm uh, Inspector Frost, Jack Frost. Is she all right, Mr. Frost? Oh, well, yes, she's going to be fine. Um, you guys go and see Mum. I'll catch you up. Yes, she's uh, right down the corridor on the left. Thank you. Alan Moorhead. Oh, how do you do? Um, I gave the kids an edited version of what happened. Is she all right? Yes, she's going to be fine. But the line between that and what might have been, well, it's pretty close. Was this fire an accident? Um, no, we don't think it was. I gather you're a friend as well. Christine won't think that's any of my business, but we've got two children whose safety makes it my business. Yes, of course. Well, Christine will fill you in with the details. I'm afraid that I must be off. Nice to meet you. And you? Yeah, bye-bye.
So, if you'd just like to check through all the details, make sure it's all correct and sign at the bottom, please. Yeah, okay. What do you want, Mr. Salmon? Don't worry, Inspector, not you. The car's been stolen last night. Really? Well, quite a lot happened last night, then. Something I should know about? You judge. There was a fire at the RSPCA centre. Fire brigade tell us it was arson. So if Mr. Burland hasn't been in touch with you, he will be. Uh, is that an accusation, Inspector? Mrs. Moorhead was in the clinic last night when it was firebombed. Now, they called him the cat killer. Not because he killed cats, no, no. No, because he used cats at least twice to get his victims to stop. Yes, yes, and I know all that trick. Yes, I'm just cranking up my motor. It's a long time ago, you know, 20 years. 22. What? It's here. Look. Daniel Ruckman. Where's Daniel Ruckman now? Well, it was another two years before he was caught. He killed two more women by then, though. But that's all I've got on the computer. Daniel Ruckman died 21st of April 2003, Broadmoor. Transferred from Leeds in 98. <laughs> Ten years to work out, he's barking mad. Well, it looks like you were right, Trig. We got two crimes that are the same as something that happened years ago. Three? What? If Mr Trigg is right about the attack on your car and the smashed kitchen window... Hmm. All right, get me everything you can on the underpass, the cat killer, and the attacks on officers' cars. Right? Oh. And see if there's anything about something being written on a windscreen. Like what? Like a death threat. George, hmm. there was a kitten where Philip Hedden was killed. Where is it? I don't know, Jack. Well, find it. Jerry Berlin's been trying to reach you all morning. No charges against his son or the other boy. They're due for release. He wants to know why you're not on it. That's not all he wants me on. Well, I don't want him on my back. All right. I... Is he on the car, Greg? No, and I don't have high hopes. Well, he's paying us a lot of money. It's Greg's problem, not mine. Yeah, but he has a problem. He certainly doesn't do much for the reputation of this practice. <laughs> Since when has that been any concern of yours? Well, I hope we soon will be, Alice. Neil, call over tomorrow. Marty. SPCA. Burland has an alibi? His house was burgled. He made such a fuss that no one from CID was turned out. So his alibi is Georgie Toulon. Be careful about making it too personal, Jack. That's a weapon his lawyer will use against us. Well, how would I want to make it personal? Emergency. Oh, let's say my hair needs some attention. Can you come to the house? Oh, great. Oh, you're an angel. Thanks. See you then. Bye. He's had 
someone following my kids, Jack, photographing them. Berland is not going to get away with this, Christine. He is not, I promise you. I made a decision. Nobody would intimidate me out of telling the truth about Brian's murder, but it's not me I'm afraid for, Jack. Not now. All right, Marek. She shuts up, right? Ah, oh, she's shut up all right. It's a surprise, though, she hasn't been shut up for good. You remember the brief, yeah? A small fire after the place was empty. The job is done. Yeah. I think you've been sampling too much of the merchandise, me old son. <laughs> you should take a holiday, Marek, eh? Poland. See the family. By the way, here's a wee bonus for you. Some of the Taliban's best. Knock yourself out. So, George, we found Mr. Salmon's pride and joy then, have we? Yeah. Someone tried burning it out by the Fernside Shopping Centre. They weren't very good at it. <laughs> but it's not your average nicked car. Huh? Keys, still in the ignition, and this, 50 grams of cocaine found in the boot. Mm. And the car also matches the description of a hit and run that's put a four-year-old girl in hospital. She's in a coma. Are you sure? It's only a moment. I can still see it now. You know who did it. This car was reported stolen the night or the morning before the accident. Now, we have this car, and if there are any traces of the bike on it, we know it's the one. It's not just about finding the car. It's about what was in it. I just bought some Coke. Quite a lot, and it was in the boat. Uh, you left it in your car? I was out of my tree. Alice, I don't even remember getting home. Do I want to hear this? If they think the drugs are something to do with me, Why then we... Why would they? Criminals steal cars. They use them for crimes. Well, I would have to prove that I was at home that night and that I never went out. You expect me to lie for you? I'm not saying they could prove anything, but surely it's better for all of us if they don't even try. The question of what I would be doing with that much coke. <laughs> hmm. A mugging a murder and a bike rider who's into ancient history. Your ancient history, Jack. And now a death threat. Words on a windscreen. Doesn't put us in a position to make a link, does it? Well, if we hadn't lost the evidence, of course. I was in no position to do a forensic examination last night, was I? Anyway, who's ever doing this knows a lot about you. You specifically. And now a man is dead. What about the RSPCA? Is there any way this could be linked to Berland? No. No. Berland's too clever to threaten me. Oh, Trigg's right. If the death threat does connect, it'll be with the mountain bike attacks. Yeah, Jenny and I are trying to find a, a link between the original attacks 20 years ago. Yeah, but there was no link then, was there? Well, they both gave you a hard time. There was a lot of criticism of CID. The criminals went on to commit similar crimes, to kill. But there was a feeling things were missed. I'm not saying it's true. No, maybe it was. I mean, it wasn't Denton CID's finest hour, was it? Or mine either, come to that. The attacks on officers' cars was never solved. 
Not in the same league, I know, but still a failure. Someone's rubbing your nose in it, Jack. That's the nearest I can get. No. Goes deeper than that. We're investigating a murder. I know we are, Jack. And until it's proved otherwise, I'm taking it that this death threat is real. Cat's about five months old. Anything distinctive? No. If we had an Abyssinian, a Persian or a Russian blue, you could start with a list of breeders. This is all moggy. I couldn't guess how many of these are born round Denton in a week. Dumped, drowned, thrown out of cars, and occasionally given a loving home. Would it have been bought? Probably not. Oh, but this was. Most cats don't even get a collar. A big pet shop would sell dozens of dog leads in a week. They wouldn't sell one of these in a month. Could I oh. take it like that, thank you. I thought you were going to get your hair done. No barrier, no CCTV. Easy enough to steal a car from here. Especially if you leave the keys in the ignition. Hello, here he is. Ah, Inspector. Hello. Not bad, eh? Living above the shop? Yeah, well, only during the week, you know. So, good news, found the car then. What's the damage? I thought you didn't want anything to do with Sean anymore. If Sean and I didn't do anything, we should be behaving like we didn't, according to Mr. Burland. You do everything, he says. Why not? You do. What time did you arrive home? Uh, just before nine, with my girlfriend, Alice Parmenta. She can vouch for that, can she? Yeah. Sorry, no, I... <laughs> I don't mean to come the heavy-handed solicitor, particularly when you found my car so quickly, but why am I being interrogated? A time frame, Mr. Salmon. Right. Well, uh, like I said, we got back just before 9, and I didn't leave again the next morning till 10, when I saw the car was gone. So the car could have been stolen that night or the next morning? Well, I guess. Did you know that there was nearly £2,000 worth of cocaine in the boot? Uh, no. No, I... Uh, so, so it was stolen for a crime, then? I guess. Well, they dumped the car with the drugs in it. That's a little... Well, it's a little odd, isn't it? Well, the car was also involved in an accident. A serious hit-and-run that put a little girl in Denton Hospital. She's in a coma. A mother and father are praying that she'll come out of it. So what I need from you, Mr. Salmon, is evidence that your car was really stolen. All right, everybody. Get some drinking in there. Sean. What are you doing up here? Come on, it's like a week time there. Awake. Yeah, that's cool, Dad. Oh, son, come on, come on. Put it behind you, come on, put it behind you. You don't need to think about this stuff again. It's all right. Come downstairs. Anybody here? What did you expect? You know, mates to rally round. It's what people do when there's trouble. 
You're confusing people with us, Jerry. Most people don't have a party when a boy gets killed. Oh! Alu Gobi, or Gobi, as some people say. Bombay Alu. Well, you can't have enough potatoes if you're having Indian. That's what I always say. Prawn Madras and Chihiki Madras. Now for the rice. Mm. Lovely. I suppose I don't you like Indian? We don't usually have it in quite such large amounts, Mr Frost. Right. <laughs> well, look, call me Jack, please. Is that your real name? No, my real name is uh, William. But uh, don't tell your mother because she'll be using it. <laughs> wow. Right. Let's dish yeah. up, shall we? Right, yeah. OK. Would you... Uh... Go and get Josh for me. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Right. He's uh, upstairs. Upstairs, right. Follow the noise. What's going on now, Mum? Nothing. I, I, I've been working with Inspector Frost. He's been very kind to me. I see. This is all part of a community policing scheme, is it? Uh, dinner's ready. Mr. Frost? Hmm? You know the fire at Mum's work? Yeah. Well, she says it was an accident. I don't believe her. Look, you won't get on very well with us if you don't tell us the truth. Well, with me anyway. Would you like me to get on well with you? Mum will want you to. At least we know who's been following Christine's kids. Petrol. Tar. Sugar. Have you set fire to the RSPCA clinic, eh? As close as you're going to get to the forensic analysis of what did it. Yeah. Who was he? Well, he rented the room as Joseph Malkovich. The landlord thought he heard him speaking Polish on the telephone. His name in the driving licence is Marek Lazowski. Lazowski. Look at this. Cause of death, do you reckon? This bloke worked for Berland. So do we bring Berland in? No. No, no, not yet. I don't want him to know about Lazowski. Not until we know more. Now, you didn't investigate Mr. Berland's burglary, did you? Mm hmm? When I turned up, it was all he could do to stop laughing. Yeah, well, I know. But you see, you didn't interview the neighbours, did you? There was no forensic, no dogs. Very often, it's not for a while after the burglary that people realise what, in fact, has been taken. If you'd like to look at this list that your husband gave Sergeant Toulon. There's nothing else, Inspector. I wasn't even here. Jerry, I'm sure he's filled What's you in. What's the meaning of piling in here and searching my house? I mean, where's your warrant? Uh, we're investigating a burglary, sir. You asked for CID involvement, and, well, here we are. And, of course, we don't need a search warrant to investigate a crime scene, do we? Just going upstairs, Governor. Yeah, good. Carry on. Yeah, but they didn't go upstairs, did they? Ah, oh, but you don't know. You can't be too sure. And I wouldn't want you to feel that we weren't taking this seriously. Yeah. Right, well, I mean, it's no big deal. I was, uh, I was a bit upset on the night, that's all. It was actually Sally. I was uh, worried about, you know, being on the house on her own. Right, love? Well, she seems to be holding up. Listen, Inspector Frost, I appreciate what you're doing, but honestly, they were in and out in minutes. I doubt you'll find any clues, really. 
Well, the way we handle these things, sir, is that uh, it sends out a message to the villains that we're serious. Governor. Yeah. Upstairs. Excuse me, sir. They were in the drawer. The dog got them as soon as he walked in the room. It's probably ecstasy. Oh, dear. Drugs. Ecstasy. You do realise that these are a Class A prohibited substance, don't you? Oh, well, of course you do. Are they uh, Sean's or are they yours, Mr. Burland? My client is not prepared to answer any questions now. He'll give a statement later, at which point he will answer your questions. I hope it won't be necessary to take him into custody. Even a successful prosecution would be unlikely to generate more than a fine. Think about it, Sean. All of it, I mean. Think hard. Stupid Torag. I want to beat the living shit out of you. The more intelligent dogs. Just get in the car. Jerry, listen, I'm getting a bit uneasy. About what? What happened to Christine Moorhead? Well, that's got something to do with me. I didn't say that. Then what are you saying? I am saying I'm going to find it very difficult to represent you if the truth becomes too unpalatable. Look, you're involved with a lot of things that a lot of people might find unpalatable, including Jack Frost. Now, you just remember that. Ah, oh, George, what have you got on Salmon's car? Uh, we've got footage of it on the bypass before the accident. Yeah? There's no doubt how erratic the driving is. Oh, good. We're trying to work backwards from there. Any news on the girl? Still the same. Do you think it was him? I know he's lying. Jack. Hello. I've had a chance to look at Lazowski. He was a regular heroin user and he injected shortly before he died. What, an overdose? He wouldn't have thought so. What do you mean? This wasn't just any heroin. This stuff was so pure that a normal dose would kill anyone. Now, I mean, I don't know where Lazowski got it, but if dealers are selling this in Denton, you'd be picking bodies up off the streets. Well, could it have been bad luck? No. Well, it's possible it was bad luck or incompetence, but it's unlikely. I'd say this stuff was designed to kill. Right. Your mother says I'm not allowed to kill you, but as you know, I don't normally follow her advice, but I'm going to give you a break this time, Sean, so listen up. Here's the scoop. There are a lot of things that are difficult in this world, but you just have to deal with them. There's two types of people, right? There's scum and there's us. Scum do drugs. Nobody in my family goes near you drugs. You sell the bloody stuff. Yeah, but that's because it's my business, Sean, right? Nobody questions me about that. If I see any sign of this again, you're going to be carrying the bruises for a month, right? For your own good, son. Yeah? Sean. Come on. Let's talk about something else, yeah? What about the two of us going on holiday, yeah? What about going to the States? Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right? Yeah, all right. Come on. That's it. It was the last three months from the Met. There's a man they wanted in connection with two suspicious deaths. They were both drug dealers. The man was foreign. Hold on, I'm getting there. Oh, Jenny, come on. Can't you come and give him a hand, you know, crank him up? I only do ancient history. Sorry. Oh, pity. All right, try two months, entry. Yes, I've got it. Yeah. A body found in Tottenham, a body found in Chiswick by the river, same heroin. And a description of the man wanted in connection with. Ah, right, let me see that. Yes. See, according to this description, this could be Lazowski. I'm off to the Met.
Jack. Ah, well. Been a long time. Yep. Mm. Do you want to come up? Uh, no. I want some information that you may not want to tell me for all sorts of reasons that you are going to say are operational. So I think it's better if we were off the premises. Hmm. We didn't have a name, but that's the man. He was a fixer for Berland. Then he disappeared. We had a witness who thought he might be Polish. So we wondered whether maybe he'd gone back home. And he was only in Denton. Yeah, well. He was off our radar. Mm. You ought to be looking at the range you're getting on that radar of yours. Yeah. Well, we still can't get enough evidence to put Berland away, and, uh, well, he's making it very hard for us to track him. So, it all needs to know stuff, is it? He's no joke. You know that. I've got a dead body that I think Berland is responsible for. I've got a friend who's lucky to be alive. I've got a dead boy who wouldn't be dead if Berland didn't live in Denton. Now, I intend to make my problems his problems and bang him up. He should be inside already, considering the Met's resources. And that's what you left us for, wasn't it? The bright lights. We have had the chance to put Berland away for a couple of years. But well, there's no point doing that if you can leave his infrastructure intact. Oh, his infrastructure. That's a word you never learned at Denton, Nick. I would be grateful for anything you've got on Berland. Anything at all. You wouldn't have had the job that you got if I hadn't given you the thumbs up. You don't think they took your word about how good you were, did you? No, they picked up the phone and spoke to your governor. Jack, I'm not in a position to give you any information which we're still active on. But you will, though, won't you, sir? Look, I know Frost. He thinks I was driving the car, he thinks I hit the girl, and he thinks the drugs have got something to do with me. He's right about that. Yeah, well, he's not right about the rest. Greg, I have given you an alibi. What else do you want? You're a solicitor, for God's sakes. If there's nothing the police can prove, then there's no case. Sorry, sorry, it's just... I'm wound up about Jerry Berland, who he is playing a dangerous game and we shouldn't be involved. We're not. Whatever he's doing, we don't want to know. You're his solicitor, not his bloody priest. All right. All right. You'll be fine. Don't worry. Right. You know, sooner or later, you're going to have to tell him about us. Entirely sure there's an ask to tell him about, David. Well, that side of things doesn't matter much anyway, but we did have a chat about a partnership for me. I haven't forgotten. Good. Well, some things are easy to forget, Alice, but some things do just keep popping up again. We don't sell many. Mostly it's people with real pedigrees who buy them, and only certain kinds. Siamese, Burmese. Did you sell this one? Mm, I'm sure I did. Not very long ago, either. A week or ten days? Do you remember who bought it? Very well. A woman. Oh, is there anything distinctive? She had a fantastic mountain bike outside. I'd give my eye teeth for it. Now, you say when it feels right, it doesn't matter how long it takes. OK. Well, I have a picture in my mind. It's not as clear as I thought. But I can see the hair and the face shape. Can we start with that? Mm. 
All right, George. How'd you go on with the photo fit? Anything worthwhile? I don't know. What do you mean? Well, we've got a likeness. We've got a very good likeness. If it's right, that is. Oh. Is it someone we know? Like I say, if it's right. George, you get on the back. The back door was open. Oh, right. Well? It doesn't look as though there's anybody here. There's a mountain bike in the yard. I'd say it's the one the pet shop woman saw. All right. You check upstairs. Jack. Hello. You better come up here. Need to see this. Eric Edwin. Jenny is Eric's daughter. Last time I was here, she was eight years old. The cuttings, files. It's all about you. All the photographs of you. They've all been defaced. Hello? Yeah. Yep, yeah, thank you. Jack? Yeah. They found her. If we move any closer, she says she'll jump. The only person she'll talk to is you, sir. Pity about my vertigo, isn't it? I knew there was something. I mean, I didn't recognize you, but you were always familiar. When I was a kid, I loved the sound of sirens. I thought it was Dad going to catch robbers. Dad and you. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I never meant to kill the man in the lane. He wasn't meant to die. No, I know. But you did the tires and the window, didn't you? No, that doesn't matter. But the woman in the underpass, Jenny, you could have killed her too. It was just to show you. Show me what, love? I didn't know what to do when the job at Denton came up. It wasn't an accident. Dad sent me. Mum's gone now, six months ago. She was never the same after he died. I knew I had to find a way to make you remember, like he remembered all the bad things you did to people you hurt Dad knew. I made a mess of a lot of things. I admit that. He didn't deserve what you did. 
Jenny, your father and I were good friends for a long time. I remember that. I made a mistake because he was a good friend. I ignored things that I shouldn't have ignored. Being a policeman was his life, and Jim took it all away. He wanted to find a way to pay you back. Jenny, you were only eight years old. You didn't understand what was going on. You didn't understand that what he was doing was wrong. I understand what you did. He was planting evidence on people. Liar! Whether they were innocent or guilty, that was wrong. It's not true. And some of those people were innocent. He trusted you. Jenny, there are people you can talk to. There are people who can help. You don't have to jump. That's it. Very good. That's good. Stay where you are, George. I don't need to jump. But you will. One way or another. And if... If I don't jump, you will shoot me, eh? Heights, you know, Jenny. I get very frightened of heights. In fact, I'm terrified of heights. I'm stay, George! Now! Get an ambulance! Quickly! You all right? <sighs> yeah. He spent his last years following everything that I did. What for? Evidence. He was hoping that he'd discover something that would get me kicked out of the force. Like he was kicked out. I mean, look, he's got it all in it. Newspaper cuttings. Letters? He's got hundreds of letters. You know them all. Huh. Look. One here, there's this chief constable's office, police complaints commission, MPs, the home office. What about Jenny? Uh, the bullet broke her thigh bone. It'll mend. You know, I used to come home sometimes with Eric, here to have a meal. I'd read her a bedtime story. She was always laughing. She was so happy. Why did you do this to her? As soon as school's over, I'm going to get a cheap flight somewhere hot and sit it out. I'll be starting at Oxford in September. You'll be going off to Hull. Well, depending on the results, I'm expecting a disaster. <laughs> and not you. Mrs. Mulhead could have died. Well, she didn't. So she's a lot better off than Brian Shanklin, right? I never meant for Does that it to matter? Ha you did it. But you got a break. Take it. If people are afraid of you, you can do what you like. Even murder. I just... I can't get Brian out of my head. I can. I need to talk. And Dad won't talk what about I it. What I need is never to see this place again. And you either. Jack, 
I think I've got something on the hit and run. A postman. He saw the car about two miles from where it hit the girl. Does it give us anything new? It was stationary. But the car door was open and someone was leaning out. A man. Postman thinks he was throwing up. Right. The man had his head out the driver's door. That's why the postman couldn't see him. There's no description, dark clothes, possibly a suit. Not your average joyrider, then. He also thinks there was someone else in the car, possibly a woman. But again, there's no description. Ms. Parmenter reckons that she spent the night with Gregory Salmon. There's no alibi if they were both in the car. Mm. Hello. What is this? What's that look like to you? Sick. Exactly. Mm. And if that belonged to Gregory Salmon, we got him banged to rights. Scoop it up, George. Sean, open the door. Hi, guys. You left these at my place. I don't know how you think you're doing your schoolwork without them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Had to be in Reading anyway, thought I'd drop them off. Thanks, Alan. Coming in, Dad? No, no, I'm late. Oh. See you, Dad. Bye. Bye. Can we have a drink sometime, Jack? Jack, all right. No big deal. Just, you know, kids, and you're going to be around now. Yeah, all right, whenever you like. Give you a bell. I can't believe Alan had the nerve. How dare he do that? Ooh. Guess he had a point. The least he could have done is speak to me. I'd have told him what I thought about it as well. well that's probably why he didn't. He's on his third partner. If I mentioned wanting to vet one of them, he'd go berserk. And now he wants to interrogate you because we've been out a couple of times. He seemed nice enough. Yes, he can be. Anyway, I had a very nice evening. I hope I did all right with the kids, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Though so I have to say, I was a bit preoccupied. You didn't tell me someone tried to shoot you. I did hear about it. You don't want to talk about it. It's just that it's all rather complicated. And I just wanted to get some fresh air tonight. And I got it. Thank you. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Frost. This better be worth my while. Are you busy, Jack? Yes. Come and look at this. The evening before the hit and run, Gregory Salmon had an unlikely acquaintance, Berlin's fixer, Marek Lisowski. Almost worth it. They, uh... They took a DNA swab from Greg. Well, giving him an alibi doesn't seem such a good idea now, does it? I don't recall you having a better one. You know, I'm wondering if you might have to own up to lying for it now. What does that mean? Well, when it comes to the crunch, you might just have to admit that you lied. Because you love your man, but you can't keep on when there's a child. You bastard. Frost knows Greg asked you for an alibi. It's like that mission of guilt. The case closed. According to Darwin, it's what a billion years of life is all about. Survival of the bastards. 
Jack. Mm. It wasn't salmon puking out the car. It's not his DNA. Oh, God. Now, we've got a car that was burnt out on a piece of waste ground behind the shopping centre, which you need a car to get to or from. Or a bus. Or a train. Ferndale Station. It's just over the road. All right. Try the station and the buses. Take a picture of Salmon with you. But you've just told me... I know that we don't think that he was there, but he's not telling the truth about... Look, just bring him in. First, 50 grams of cocaine in the boot of your car, given to you by one Marek Lizowski, who was employed by Jerry Berland. Lizowski was murdered. You were the last person to see him alive. Second, we have a witness who saw a couple in a car that hit a four-year-old girl and put her in a coma. There is no alibi if Ms. Parmenter was with you. She wasn't. <clears throat> we were at home. Oh. All right. Let's start with the cocaine. It was, look, it was for friends, it's for personal use. I wasn't making any money out of it. Oh, right. You're just being Mr. Helpful then, are you? Look. The way drugs are treated puts the trade into the hands of the criminals. Ordinary people just want a recreational drug. Oh, really? Oh, well, don't worry about all the dead bodies from here to South America, then. It's the law that needs changing. Oh, is it? We'll have to see what we can do. All right, come on. What else did you do that night? <sighs> I'd been drinking. I wanted to try some of the stuff, so I, I went to a pub. I had a couple of shorts, a bottle of wine, and... and and then I went to the loo and I did a couple of lines. Stone me. You were lethal and then you drove home. I know I got back safely. It, it's just where I woke up the next morning. It... That's a funny way of looking at it, isn't it? I blacked out. I don't remember getting home. I don't remember getting to bed, but I know that I did. The next morning, the car was just gone. I was not driving that car that morning. Where was Ms. Parmenter? She wasn't there. She... <clears throat> She's been lying to try and help me. Well, Mr. Salmon, apart from the possibility of jail, I don't think you'll practice law ever again. It's Inspector Frost terminating the interview. Right, that's it. Go on, off you go. I said off, go on, out. Right, now you got the cocaine from Jerry Berland, right? <laughs> Come on, if I testify against Jerry, I won't be practicing anything again. I don't want you to testify. I want something off the record, anything. And if you help me get what I need, I could help you. Forget ethics. Think of survival. It's a farm in Hertfordshire. Organic vegetables, and they import from all over the world, you know, French beans and avocados from... Kenya, that kind of stuff. Mm. And it's Berlin's business? It's a holding company. Berlin doesn't appear to own it, and there's certainly nothing connecting him to it. Well, what's his involvement? I'm pretty sure it's his money. Why? It's where he trains his dogs. Oh, right. So, what about this deal? Well, if this leads anywhere, I'm sure the CPS will look sympathetically on the... Cocaine charges. Of course, there's no real evidence, is there? I mean about the girl, the accident. Oh, yeah. Well, according to the DNA evidence, it's most probable that you weren't involved. I'll keep you informed. What? You lied to me. You implied that you... You never once asked how she was. Did you know that? 
Ah, oh, Jeff, good. Mm. On the hit and run, we found a taxi driver at Denton Station who dropped a couple off. Guess where? George, I'm in no mood to play games. Salmon's office. And from the description of the woman, it could be Alice Parmenter. All right, Greg. Mr. Salmon did ask me to say I spent the night with him. I did it without thinking. But I wasn't there. That's not quite true, is it? Hmm? You were there. Because you went to see Mr. Salmon with Mr. Mansell Smith because dear old Greg, he supplies the drugs that the police stupidly make illegal. You've got a key, haven't you? Yes. Yes. So you know what I think? I think that you let yourself into Mr. Salmon's flat where you found him unconscious on his bed. You got what you wanted. Whether or not he brought the drugs up from the car or they were already there doesn't really matter. But then you both stayed the night. Because next morning, Mr. Mansell Smith decided he wanted to go for a drive. Mr. Salmon, he thought that his car had been stolen because he had left his keys in the ignition, but he didn't. You knew where they were. You were covering yourself all of the time. I can place you and Mr. Mansell Smith on a train and in a taxi that dropped you both off here the next morning. And when I have taken a swab, I will have the DNA of Mr. Mansell Smith, who threw up outside Mr. Salmon's car minutes before it knocked it down Caitlin Callery and drove away. And that's just the beginning. You were in the car. You were the passenger. No. David. David had just been sick. So I took over. I was driving. Will she go to prison? I don't know, Mr. Callery. They were drunk. Drugged up to their eyeballs. How does this woman not go to prison? Both of them. Well, I hope we can prove something about the drugs and the drinking. We have some forensic evidence, but it's not as conclusive as catching the driver at the scene. They're both liars. CPS will be pushing for a custodial sentence, but I can't promise. We talked about America, yeah? Sure, why not? Yeah. I mean, we can look on the internet and everything, but uh, take a month, six weeks. Start in New York, go all the way across. Huh? Route 66. I say you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City looks so, so pretty. Just follow the song. How about that? Cool. Here, take these with you. He'll be all right when he's out there. No, he won't. Can't you see that? It's like you, is it? <laughs> I hope he isn't. I hope he finds a way of turning his back on everything you stand for.
It's a good location. Easy access to the motorway in the big cities. It's isolated. Surrounded by forestry commission land, so not very many neighbours. Good location for money laundering. Yeah, and for drug running as well. So, what do you think, Sam? Hey, eh? Looks like infrastructure to me. <laughs> Have you talked to Lee Valley? Yeah, as far as they're concerned, it's a farm. Never had any cause for concern except for traffic. You know, big lorries going in and out. Sounds very promising. Well, we can't go steaming in. We've got to know when the next delivery arrives. We have got some intelligence. Yeah, well, come on, I've shown you mine, you show me yours. <laughs> there is a delivery due, a big one. Monday or Tuesday says the word on the street, and the same word on the street says that it's Berlin's firm. What we don't know is where it's going. We well, could have a ruddy good guess, couldn't you? Yeah, but it would just be a guess, wouldn't it? No, we'll set up an operation with Lee Valley. Put his place under observation. Wait and see. But, uh, thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Hey, just a minute. What do you take me for? If you're going in after Jerry Berlin, so am I. This is a Met operation, Jack. Well, to make it official, Mr. Mullet would like you to join him for luncheon. Mullet? Come on, Jack, you're not serious. Oh, yes, I am. Unfortunately, I can't join you. I have a prior engagement. But uh, I'll catch up with you later. Mr. Mullet remembers you very well. Ah, pleasure to see you again. Um, uh, Sam. Uh, Sam, Sam, of course. <laughs> Let's go this way. Go to the canteen, shall we? Bye to me. How's everything? I love my children. And whatever Christine says, I need to know what's going on. She hasn't been out with anyone, not in a long time. I am what you see, Mr. Moorhead. Now, CV wouldn't impress you very much, not unless you're looking for a policeman. Though, if you listen to my superintendent, he would have doubts about that. I'm not asking questions at that, that side of it. It's none of my business. I just want to be able to say hello when I turn up at the house. I'm only over there to collect the kids, but the kids know. And they know there's more than, well, you know. Well, they're ahead of me. Jack, they always are. <laughs> well, they're good kids, Mr. Moorhead. Despite us. And it's Alan. I'm sorry if you thought this was the Inquisition. It's just, you know, we will be bumping into each other. No, I know. Well, I, uh... Do you want another one? No, don't drink. And there's a limit to the amount of orange juice and lemonade a man can take. Well, anyway, look, I'm sorry, I must go. Good to meet you. And you, mate. Sir? Whiskey, large one. tell you how many years I've been watching terrible things happen to people's children. And they always blame themselves. And too many times they're right to. Well. <laughs> I 
Doesn't change the job today, does it? Not for us, anyway. Help me, Sally. Please, help me. How can I? I can't help myself. I didn't know what he was feeling. I didn't know any of it. No, you didn't. You couldn't. Because you did it. <laughs> you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it! You did it. We've got at least two who will identify Berlin, so we're away. We're into the network now, here and in Holland, and we're into the money too. Criminal assets on a serious scale. We've got him. He's still on my patch. Then you bring him in, Jack. You bring him in. It'll be a pleasure. There's nothing left for us. I don't want to see you, speak to you, ever. I need to speak to the police about Brian. It's what Sean wanted, what he wanted all along. It's still not your fault. Shut up. It's all our fault. For God's sake, let it be our fault.
I heard about what happened, Jerry. Oh, I'm sorry. Very sorry. Never even thought about Brian's mum and dad. You know that? He was... He was everything. He was everything. It's just over. It's all over. It's all over. Time to go, Jack. Still another boy, a dead boy, but a boy just like Joshua. And none of it had to happen. No, but mostly that's how it is. Yeah. And what about that woman? Mm -hmm. The one who tried to kill you. Oh. You still haven't told me what happened. You made it sound as if it happened every day. But you left out, well, almost everything. Almost. Will it always be like that? A lot of the time. As long as I know. You, you shouldn't drive tonight. Well, I was hoping I wouldn't have to. Ah, good morning. Lovely morning. Ah, good morning, George. Well, you fancy a cup of coffee and a nice sticky bun. It's only three days old, so eat it while it's fresh-ish. Huh. It's a nice surprise. Hmm. Ah, tell me, George, have you... Yeah. ...ever been a best man? Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> Don't tell me someone's asked you to be a best man. I would be daft enough to do that. Then I take the ring and give it to you. You put it on Christine's ring finger. You continue to hold it. And then, William, you say, with this ring, I thee wed. <clears throat> with this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee worship. With my body, I thee worship. And with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. And with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. I say a prayer, then I say, those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Um, if you want to kiss, well, that is the usual procedure, of course. Well, we should make sure that's OK. William? Go. Okay. <laughs> William, oh, William, you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Fancy a curry, Jack? You ought to get home early and work on your best man speech. I'm assuming there's nothing embarrassing about me in it. Oh, I've got a long memory. Come on, curry. <laughs> I'll keep you company. That's what the best man does. Yeah, all right. Thank you, George. If you ever hope to make Inspector, you've just blown your last chance. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, and I get to sit with Mr. Mullet. It's even better. Oh. I uh, hope that was a surprise, Jack. Well, yes, it 
Certainly was, sir, and you know how I like surprises. So. Mm. <laughs> now, um, uh, before, um, before we get on with the uh, festivities, I think I should, uh, I should say a few words. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it may surprise uh, some of you to know that uh, Inspector Frost and I uh, have not always seen eye to eye. Yes. <laughs> it would be an exaggeration to say that he and I have been uh, close over the years, but uh, I will say this, however hard he tries to get away, I'll always find him. <laughs> 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 of course, um, I would never have made a detective of his caliber myself. And over time, he's taught me the value of instinct, uh, gut feelings. I've even developed gut feelings of my own. So much so that it is extremely rare that I don't know when Inspector Frost is up to something that I shouldn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack has, has uh, dedicated his life uh, to what he does. And whatever our disagreements, nobody does it better. Nobody, uh, nobody does it with more honesty or, or commitment. And perhaps, Jack, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't always recognized that. So let's raise our glasses to Jack, our colleague, and our friend. To Jack. 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 You're dead. Bed, Alan. You do know what tomorrow is. I saw the light. I was passing. What do you mean, passing? Passing! Oh, shh. The kids are asleep. I don't want you to do this. What are you talking about? Frost. Marrying him. You've only known him months. It's a bad idea. I don't think it's right for you. Or for Josh and Sophie. It's what I feel, Christine. What you feel? You walked out of my life because of what you felt. You left me with two small children because of what you felt. Never mind what they felt. It was a mistake. And I knew it was a mistake before I went. I've been on my own. Most of the kids' lives. I'd given up the idea there'd ever be anybody. What are you trying to do to me, Alan? I never loved any of the others. You've been drinking. Oh, Alan. You're an alcoholic. You don't drink, ever. I can make it up to you. We can start again. Never too late. We've got the kids. It can work. You still think I'm your bloody property, don't you? Just get out! my house. Don't tell me what to do. This was my house once, remember? Did you touch me? How can you do it? It's all right, it's all right. It's just going.
Jack. Oh, thank you. And uh, John. to make a habit of making a mess of important things. I should have told you that, shouldn't I? What have they said? Well, apart from you taking a trolley, when can we have it back, you mean? Jack, please. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. I just, you know, I was just a bit bad and bruised, that's all. <laughs> I saw George. Oh. Oh, yeah. He's taken a trolley as well, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's got a broken arm. Mr. Mallet's all right. He'll just need a new suit, that's all. <laughs> <sighs> How's Alan? Oh, I'm sorry, love. <sighs> right. We're going to get you down to X-ray now, Mr. Frost. Make sure there's nothing going on we don't know about. Are you ready, then? Yes, thank you, Doctor. I'll be all right, love. I'll be all right. Oh. Uh, just concussion oh. kicking in. Excuse me, Doctor! Coming through. Excuse me. stop too long. The truth is, it's just a machine that's keeping him alive now. And you've got to switch it off. We have no other choice. Mrs. Toulon wanted you to be there. see through a glass darkly, then shall we see face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three. And the greatest of these is love. It's hard to see a way back from all of this. I know. But we will. I've already made my vows, Jack. I made them at the rehearsal. For better, for worse. 
I meant it. Denton Police Station has always been a refuge, as well as a job for me. Stopped me thinking about anything else. I don't think I feel that anymore. And I often thought that I'd left it too late to be anything other than a policeman. No, I don't think that. George had a life that wasn't just about being a policeman. In fact, I think it was most of his life. And I know that sometimes he felt sorry for me because I hadn't. You know, I hadn't had what he had. But now we've got a life to live. And we've got an awful lot to cram in. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs>